Most backgrounds in nature are not single colors, but combinations of colors in various shades of light and dark that form patterns. A pattern of moss on the ground. The ridges of bark on a tree. A sharp etching of interlaced twigs and branches. Or the outlines of a leaf cluster. Such backgrounds are among many kinds of natural patterns. Similar matching patterns are found among animals. Birds of the nighthawk family, for instance, bear an overall pattern that matches the ground and mossy rocks where they often nest. The pattern of these young nighthawks blends very closely with the grassy ground pattern of their nest. A line pattern of twigs is closely imitated by the slender body and legs of the walking stick. Unless the insect moves, it is very difficult to see. Unlike most insects, the walking stick has no wings, so it cannot fly to escape enemies. But its remarkable camouflage offers protection and is a good example of adaptation to environment. The bark moth bears a natural pattern so similar to the trees on which it rests that it is camouflaged even when seen close. The tree frog also bears a bark matching pattern. While its ground dwelling relative, the garden toad, has an overall pattern that blends with the mottled earth. Most small animals, such as the rabbit, bear simple ground matching patterns. These patterns may be modified, as in the case of the ground squirrel, to blend with the open field pattern of grasses and other low plants. This ground squirrel of the Middle West is also known as the striped gopher. A pattern of stripes running lengthwise along the body is found among various animals. It is claimed that such stripes also help to conceal motion. Both sets of these stripes are moving, although the motion of the lower ones is not as easy to detect. The principle of lengthwise stripes in motion is illustrated in this garter snake. A pattern of lines on the neck of the bittern suggests the grass pattern of the marsh where this bird lives. When frightened, the bittern may hold in one position quite motionless. The lively killdeer plover bears markings similar to the pebbles and shadows of the fields and shorelines where this wading bird lives. The speckled eggs of the killdeer too match their surroundings. And the baby chicks are also well camouflaged. The killdeer markings that look so conspicuous in a museum setting may look only like shadows against a natural setting. The matching of a natural pattern is even more remarkable in certain animals that can produce a change of skin color. The tree frog has the ability to change skin color. The grayish green color that the frog has on a leaf changes to grayish brown when it is on a tree. The ability to change skin color is shared by other amphibians, by some reptiles, and by certain fish. The flounder is a remarkable example of camouflage. Usually, the flounder resembles the pattern of the pebbly ocean floor on which it lies, flat on its side. The matching is so close that the fish seems to disappear in the sand. Against light-colored sand, the flounder's color and pattern change to match this background so closely that we barely see the outline of the fish. The moving gills help us locate the head. In laboratory experiments, flounders have even reacted to artificial backgrounds. 
the polka dot pattern is being imitated quite closely by the flounder. Another principle of camouflage is related to the age difference in animals. These adult egrets are white. The young egret's first feathers are black, then gradually become lighter as it gets older. The theory is that dark colors serve to protect the young while they are growing up. The deer shows difference in color and pattern between the adult and the young. A pattern of sunlight filtered through leaves is suggested by the light flecks on the fawn, whose safety depends on being hidden in a thicket or in tall grass. Mottling and dappling on young animals blends them with their natural background during the period when they are young and less able to escape from enemies. Natural patterns may vary not only with age, but with difference in sex. There is a pronounced difference in coloration between the male and female of many species of birds, as in this pair of bobolinks. Usually the male is conspicuous and the female drab. Notice how the stripes and drab colors of the female blend with her grassy nesting site. On the other hand, the bold colors of the male may help to divert attention away from his well-hidden family. A similar example is seen in the ring-necked pheasant. The mottled brown pattern of the female blends almost perfectly with the grassy field where she nests. but the bold markings of the male make him stand out clearly. This pair of phalaropes, relatives of the sandpipers, illustrates an interesting reversal of the duties of the sexes. Among these birds, it is the female which is more boldly colored in the markings on the head and neck, while the male incubates the eggs and wears the planar plumage. Among some animals, breaking up outlines affords camouflage. Some birds have bold areas of contrasting colors which help to break up the body outline. The shape of the goldfinch is broken up by dark markings on the head, wings, and tail. Bold patterns of color help disguise the overall shape of the red-headed woodpecker. Contrasting markings on the avocet may suggest shadows and reflections that make the body outline harder to see. In many animals, the conspicuous outline of the bright eyes may be disguised by a line or band of color. The black areas on the raccoon's face resemble a bandit's mask. A light or dark streak through the eye is common among many birds, such as the familiar bobwhite quail. The bold markings help to break up the outline of the head. Another kind of bold marking that may confuse an enemy are the eye spots on many moths and butterflies. It is claimed that a bird or other enemy may aim at such a bold spot on the wing and thus miss the vulnerable parts of the insect's body. Other insects are iridescent, and perhaps the shifting light and dark produces a dazzling effect that confuses an enemy. Of course, camouflage may serve to protect an animal in more than one way. The bold markings of the skunk, for instance, help break up the outline of the body. In this particular setting, the white parts blend with the white flowers. But some observers consider such bold markings warning coloration, a kind of advertising to enemies to stay away from such a well-armed animal. And so, by very bold markings, by combinations of bold markings and drab colors, and by overall patterns that match natural backgrounds, camouflage in many variations provides protection for animals in their natural environment.